Hello, I'm Simon Timmis and I work for IET Venues and Events and welcome to the rather rainy roof here at IET London Savoy Place. This is the London home of the IET and over the next two years a major project is underway to refurbish it. Throughout the project we'll be doing these video updates to let you know what's happening and also to bring you face to face with many of the people working on the project including some of the IET members involved. Savoy Place closed its doors on the 19th of July and since then lots of work has been done to prepare for the construction teams to move in. In recent weeks over four linear kilometres of books have been carefully removed from the library shelves and put into secure storage for protection, although members can still access most books via the library team. The IT archives have been moved next door to Savoy Hill House and will be reopening for member use later in the year. All our other member facilities, including a business centre and lounge, are now available at One Birdcage Walk in Westminster. Many of the rooms in Savoy Place have now been stripped out, ready for the next phase of construction, and now that the building is empty, further surveying work is being carried out. In early August, full planning permission was granted by Westminster Council, allowing the build to move on in earnest. We're also currently preparing the large void above the current lecture theatre for a second auditorium. Ian Sharrett is the lead architect on the project and we caught up with him to find out more about the plans for the building. At present we're in the process of stripping out the ceilings, the floor and wall finishes to enable the new structures, the ducts and cableways to be introduced. That said, we're not stripping everything out. When the institution first moved into Savoy Place in 1909, they introduced a number of significant features to the building as part of making it the home of the institution. And these are being retained and restored. The entrance hall was remodelled and lined with marble, announcing in true Edwardian style the public face of the institution. Here the proposal is to strip away the later introductions, to clean the marble and to restore the experience of arrival to its former glory. Another 1909 introduction was the creation from three individual rooms of a new library, a powerful symbol of the learning, research and development carried out by the institution and its members. And here we're retaining the room in its 1909 layout, complete with its upper level gallery, its bookcases and the books in them, to form an attractive new setting for members to use for seminars, receptions and other events. Finally, and in many ways the jewel in the crown, this magnificent mahogany-lined lecture theatre was formed in 1909. This has been the setting for many important lectures, presentations and member events over the past 100 years. A role it will continue to form into the future but with the benefit of new ventilation and environmental systems, new AV and IT systems, and new seats. There's a much more extensive description of the scheme on the IT website, but hopefully this has been a useful introduction. Thanks, Ian. We'll be back in another couple of months with another update. Thanks for watching. See you then.